Let's address a common roadblock a lot of people face, even those who have been working in Photoshop for years. Creative block. Staring at a blank screen and not knowing what to create. Hello, my name is Rickard, and today let's talk creativity. If you've ever wondered whether creativity is something that some people have naturally and others don't, here's the truth. Creativity is something that can be learned. It's something that can be exercised. Think of it as a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. I've seen a lot of people associate technical skill with creativity, and this will get you going down the wrong rabbit hole. The reality is that the more you build your creative muscle, the less you will need to focus on the technical, whether it be in Photoshop or any other software you're using. In my experience, you only need to know 20% of Photoshop to get 90% of your results. This is one of the principles of my creative Photoshop learning method, which is the method I used to become a digital artist and designer. I didn't get an art degree or spend years learning Photoshop. Instead, I focused on the fundamentals of creating the kind of images that clients want and learning the recipes for creative results. The stress here being on creative results, not Photoshop results. And anyone can learn how to create beautiful digital art that inspires people using this same method. So now that we've laid the groundwork for understanding creativity, let's delve into practical strategies to overcome creative blocks. Here are five actionable tips that can help you navigate through those moments of uncertainty and unlock your creative potential. First, inspiration, inspiration, and more inspiration. Jack London said, you can't wait for inspiration, you have to go after it with a club. Now the most obvious place to look for inspiration is online. You can do it without leaving your desk. Some of my favorite sites are bookcoverarchive.com, great resource for book covers, impawards.com, which is the international movie poster awards.com, lovelypackage.com for packaging, designspiration.com, Behance.net and Artstation.com are all great resources and galleries for just looking at beautiful art and design. And then for photography, my favorite is 500pixel.com and also Instagram, although that's starting to veer pretty heavily on video. Now, when you have an idea but don't know where to take it, Pinterest is great because the search function allows you to look at a whole bunch of designs or a bunch of other people's inspiration. And when it comes to collecting inspiration, I would definitely recommend creating a Pinterest account if you don't already have one, and then following boards that relate to the type of art you want to create. I actually have my own boards, which I do share publicly to the uh, Nucle community. I will include links to them in the description of this video, but anytime I'm going through websites, especially design websites like Behance or designspiration.com, when I find something that I really like or which is something that I would want to try to replicate, I will put it in there and then when I'm in a creative rut or um, get creative block, I will go back to those boards and draw inspiration from them. Now, this does lead to point number two, which is copy, but don't copy, copy. Um, there is a great quote from Salvador Dali. He said, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. So don't be afraid to copy. Find a piece of art you like, try to reproduce it exactly. The very process of creating the copy is exercising your creative muscle. Once you've copied it, you'll have the creative techniques to do it, and then you can do your own. But if you start from a position of not wanting to copy anything, you'll create nothing. All right, number three, limitations are a designer's best friend. There's nothing, nothing worse than a design client telling you there are no limits in this project. 
Uh, there was a study I read recently that said when faced with constraints, people are forced into less conventional ways of thinking. So without restriction, this research suggested we'd remain stuck in our old ways of thinking, whereas constraints create an environment that demand we use our creativity. Paradoxically, freedom is the enemy of creativity and limitations are its savior. So if you're facing creative block, don't give yourself more freedom. Instead, give yourself less freedom. Figure out restraints for whatever it is that you want to create. Now you can do these artificially as well. So for example, what can you create with just using Helvetica? What can you create using the first two images on unsplash.com? Or what can you create that must feature a bird? Um, there was actually a project I did, this piece of art that you can see here. I started this by looking at my grunge layers and thinking, what could I create using a grunge layer as a backdrop? And eventually it resulted in this piece of art. Now, if you ask most designers when they're most creative, they'll tell you that it's two hours before a deadline. So another thing that you can do here is give yourself a deadline and then meet that deadline. Creative competitions and challenges are great in this regard as they provide you with constraints and limitations and they also give you a deadline. So all these are necessary ingredients for creativity. Find and join challenges. We actually have one every month in the Nuclei Facebook group. I'll include a link to that in the description of the video, but there's other places online that do challenges. If you're a photographer, I would join some photo competitions. All right, number four, think in metaphor and analogies. I remember when I first started as a graphic designer, um, a lot of the more experienced designers used to show me designs or comment on my design saying, oh, you know, that's really clever use of green, which is associated with toxicity. And I like that you used a circle because it communicates life. And I used to be like, no, I just did it because it looked good. And the reality though, is that a lot of those things I was doing subconsciously, I just didn't realize it at the time. There's a, um, a quote from a comic book artist and writer, Stephen Grant. He said, every idea is a juxtaposition. That's it, a juxtaposition of existing concepts. Now, some of my favorite designs are the ones that you don't expect, but which make more sense than anything you could have possibly come up with. When you think of a romance book cover, the first thing that comes to mind is Fabio with his long hair holding a woman in his arms as she stares up lovingly at him. And if it has to do with vampires, there's probably going to be a moon in the background and there'll be some blood coming down from the girl's neck. Um, which is what makes the Twilight book cover so brilliant. It's just pale hands holding a single red apple. But you get biblical temptation, passion, virginity, and so much more in a cover that's very unexpected for a romance novel. I'm personally convinced <laughs> that this book cover had a lot to do with the success of that book series although I might have some bias being a, a book cover designer myself. Now, it is something I've used often when faced with creative block. Look for visual metaphor and analogies. Books on symbology are great for this. Uh, if you think of acorns, trees, eagles, ladybugs, spiders, all these have metaphorical meaning that you can use to come up with creative ideas. Um, Steve Jobs said, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. And I think of that often when I think of when I first became a designer 
and was poo-pooing what these more experienced designers were telling me is they could automatically see those connections. And while I was making some of those connections, it wasn't inherent. Now that I've been a designer for 20 years, it has become an inherent. And now I'm the one saying those things to new designers. Okay, my final tip for creative block is one I don't do enough of myself, but which always works. And that's to get up, leave the office, and go to places with a lot of people and a lot of things to look at. Some years ago, I was working on a book cover design project. We had been staying up day and night to come up with designs, and we're getting absolutely nowhere. Uh, my boss at the time, she came in and she told us to go to a mall and not come back until we had some ideas. My first instinct was, there's no way we can leave right now in the middle of all these deadlines and go to a mall. But we spent hours uh, looking through bookstores, DVDs, and other stores inside of the mall. And by the time we got back, we had a whole bunch of ideas and it entirely unlocked the project for us. So when all else fails, get up and go to the mall. And those are my five tips for solving creative block. As you may already know, I'm excited to announce that on Friday, April 26th, I'll be relaunching Nucle Academy 2.0. Instead of being an ongoing membership, this time I'll be leading a group of students through the Academy using my creative Photoshop learning method. This way, everyone gets the support they need while still being able to progress at their own speed. From concept to final print ready images, even if, even if you're not a Photoshop expert, you'll discover the power of the creative Photoshop learning method, and you won't need decades of Photoshop experience to create remarkable digital art, retouch photos, or create billboard worthy designs inside of Photoshop. Since I'll be guiding a group through the Academy, spots will be limited. I haven't finalized the exact number yet, but I'm going to be capping registration at around 100 or 150 participants. This ensures personalized attention for everyone. We do have live Zoom calls and one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting. Now, if you're interested in learning more, be sure to click the link in the description and join the waitlist. Those on the wait list will receive an exclusive invitation to join the Academy a day before it opens to the public, and I'll be sharing special insights and bonus tips exclusively with waitlist members, so don't miss out. In the next video, I'll reveal the ultimate learning strategy for Photoshop or any creative software. It's a key component of my creative learning strategy and a game changer for effectively learning Photoshop and not spending weeks, months, or years learning things you don't then ever end up using. All right, quick reminder, join the wait list, and I'll see you in the next video.